Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kevin Solomon, and as was alluded, I, I, I'm probably be the crazy one to go first because I've actually, apart from going first, it's the first time I've been on this call, so I wasn't sure how formal to, to make this, and so ho hopefully this will be accessible to everyone. Um, but I'm an assistant professor in chemical and biomolecular engineering. Um, I started at UD about a year ago. So just some quick uh, background about me personally. I, I was actually born in Jamaica, but at the tender age at 12, my parents decided that that beaches and, and great weather were, were too much. And we decided to move to the great white more, uh, north. And so um, I spent my more formative years in Toronto where I had to live through snowy days like this. So now, now that I'm in Delaware, it's quite a joy to, to see people kind of panic at the little meager snow that we have that you guys actually take care of very well. It's not like the deep south where snow falls and the road shuts down. You guys actually do a good job of cleaning it up. But um, uh, professionally, my background and training is, um, has been in chemical engineering. However, I've always been interested in merging chemical engineering into life sciences. So using um, engineering, I'm using biology um, as, a, as a platform um, that we can engineer and repurpose to solve a, a variety of different um, problems. And so um, I did a PhD in synthetic biology. So um, essentially modern day genetic engineering, modern day thinking about how to systematically engineer biological systems. And then I, I top that off with um, some training in systems biology and integrated omics analysis uh, before I then um, started my independent career at Purdue in, in a biological engineering department or moving to um, Delaware in chemical and chemical and biomolecular engineering in the middle of this pandemic. So um, as you can imagine, the, the, um, with, the, with the pandemic kind of um, first and foremost in, um, in our mind has kind of highlighted the importance and the need for nanoparticles in, in, in medicine. And so um, I guess the most obvious example right now is that our mRNA vaccines, which are uh, which are which consist of mRNA, which which is the, the business end of the vaccine that's encapsulated and protected by some nanoparticle formulation. Um, and so this is a, a formulation of chemicals that are that are nanoscale in size, which essentially protect um, protect the the mRNA cargo and allows um, allows it to distribute throughout the cell and be recognized by the, the appropriate um, cells for delivery. Um, however, critical parameters for the effect for effective use of these types of, of technologies is that they have to be stable. And so you, um, you might recall that thermal stability is one of the critical issues with, um, with the current mRNA vaccines. They, they rely on lipid droplets, so um, these combinations of, co of cholesterols, lipids, and other things, so big fat droplets. And at high temperatures, at room temperature, uh, they become too liquid, they collapse, and they, their cargo oozes out. So th there, there's been a, um, we need to have a, a robust cold chain, which makes it very difficult to distribute these things. Um, we need to um, worry about the surface of this. So how, like, how do we decorate it such that it solicits the correct immunogenic response, that it targets the right um, uh, immune system cells, that it's specific, that it is large enough to carry enough mRNA cargo to do what it needs to do, as well as, as um, having it be safe. And so a, a competing technology that's been, that's been um, emerging is, is based on plant viruses. Um, so in, in contrast to AAV or other um, adenovirus viral technologies, plant viruses um, have low exposure in human populations. And so there are, there's less risk for pre-existing immune responses that might, that might cloud, um, cloud the, the response to these vaccines. And the way these, these plant, plant viruses, these rod-shaped plant viruses work is that they consist of a single coat protein, um, which self-assemble into these disks. And when you provide it with an mRNA cargo um, that has this characteristic um, OAS sequence, I don't know if you can see my mouse, let me try this again. That has this characteristic mRNA sequence here, um, it is essentially allows for spontaneous self-assembly where this, this viral-like particle, um, this hollow tube grows around the mRNA, create, creating um, precious cargo. And so with, with this platform, you now have something that's scalable. Essentially, as long as you have this, this OAS sequence, you can put any kind of mRNA sequence that you want. So in contrast to AAV, which is an icosahedral, the space, the volume is finite. The, the volume here is infinite because this will scale as needed to encapsulate whatever you need. 
Um, they've been demonstrated to be safe and, and non-infectious in humans, uh, sorry, in, in mammals, and uh, they've been used to actually successfully deliver non-viral mRNAs to, to humans, which have been expressed, um, which is what you want an mRNA vaccine to do. And because these are, um, these are simple proteins, we can now begin to think about how we can engineer the surface to present different ligands that might tune specificity and immunogenicity. And so my lab, um, we've kind of um, honed in on barley stripe mosaic virus, and we actually started working with this for very different purposes, but um, it lends itself very well to this, this application. And we, we have, we've established a platform that allows us to mass produce this in E. coli. Um, so just, again, we don't have to worry about the long laborious processes of doing this in plants. We can get high yields. Um, and here I'm, just here I'm just showing you that we're able to assemble um, nice nanorods. And more recently, we've also begun to engineer the, the coprotein itself, uh, i.e. Given, given us confidence that we can decorate the surface in various ways while still giving robust rods that, still, that will still be able to deliver drugs. And so going forward in my lab and through um, this pilot project, we, we are um, uh, we're about to initiate studies to assess the ability of these platforms to, to target and deliver MR, targeted mRNA to macrophages. And this is in collaboration with the Berman Lab also at UD Chemi, as well as we are developing tools. So essentially we are, we are engineering the surface of these proteins um, using um, essentially some capture systems such as a spy catcher to allow us to, to decorate this with ligands to tune it to various tissues within the, um, within, within the body, um, as well as to increase um, the immune response in a controlled manner. And so I, I didn't want to, I, that was all I had prepared for today. I, I just wanted to acknowledge um, the current student, Akash, who's work, um, who will be initiating this work in the pilot project, as well as my former student, now um, Dr. Koxi Lee, who um, helped establish the, the, the platform that we're building on. And that's it. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions you might have.